Welcome back, and here's Substance Painter. So to start, we're going to go up to File, New, and where it says Mesh, we're going to select our uh, Low Poly Mesh. Okay, Barrel LP for Low Poly. And here, if you have any other normal maps or anything, you can add them here, but I don't have anything. I'm baking that all in 3D Coat, or hopefully I can. So here's our basic barrel. And navigation, substance painter is pretty similar. You hold Alt and click to move around, uh, hold Alt and right click to uh, zoom, and hold Alt and middle mouse button to kind of slide around. Okay, so to start, we're going to go to over here on the side, we have texture settings. We're going to go to bake textures. And first things first, you see here, high definition mesh. We're going to go like this, and we want to grab the uh, barrel merged HP, not the MP. MP was our medium poly, and we want the high poly. So I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to bake everything. And one thing I do want to change, I'm going to go here and I'm going to change color space for ID map. I'm going to change that to mesh ID, and that should work. Another thing we want to do is change, go back to common, and we're gonna set, I'm going to set this to 2K. That's what I set my initial settings to as well. And I'm going to say, bake textures and this will take a little while hopefully it gives us a good bake uh, it's a pretty simple object it shouldn't have any issues uh, the UVs might need some tweaking we'll see once we get into the next step here uh, but yeah I'll just uh, maybe we'll edit this bit out <laughs> okay we're done the uh, bake finished that's uh, not the best bake but it's enough to work with for what I want to show in this program. So we're going to go in here and we're just going to go to smart materials and I want uh, wood stylized. So we got this one right here. I'm going to drag it over into our layers and then a little apply. And I actually already have a mask and stuff on this one. I'm going to remove this really quick just to uh, uh let's see, hang on a second remove where is it remove mask and i'm gonna take something else out of here really quick so just ignore that for now so i applied that wood and it's just applying all over everything and you'll notice the wood direction isn't correct either so i'm gonna go in we're gonna click on wood i'm gonna expand down and this is all a layer system in here there's a few layers i'm not using Let's delete that really quick. I'm not actually using this one either. Oh, I might use that one. So we want wood fibers. And you'll notice the wood fibers, if we turn that layer on and off, that's what's giving that little bit of a texture there. And I want to change the UV rotation on those. And we're just going to slide until they line up. Now that's going up and down. That should work nicely. And over here, it's going left and right. That looks pretty nice. OK. So now I'm <clears throat> scroll back up to this and I want to go on this layer, right click and say add black mask. And it removes everything just like in Photoshop what a black mask would do. Now, you remember I baked all these different maps. I also baked one called an ID map. So I'm going to right click, go to add color select. And then you'll notice you have to click on it down here. It usually auto selects it and we're gonna go pick color. So now I just pick the colors that I want this wood to show up on. And I just keep hitting pick color to add any colors that are missing. So this bottom one's a separate color here. And there we go. And there's, you know, here you're seeing some of my bake errors here. We're gonna, we'll, we'll figure those out later. Uh, also, since this is a mask, we can just go in here and using a brush, we just hit B and just hand paint a few of these areas to fix them. So they actually apply everywhere. So you, you can do that. I'll do that for now, I guess, since this bake wasn't perfect. If I can, we can fix that later. It's better to finish something to not do it at all. <laughs> okay. So now we want to do a metal. So let's search for a metal. And I want to do iron old probably would be good. And I'm just going to drag it over, drag it in here. And then it'll apply to everything. And I actually just want that to apply to the uh, all the metal. So I'm actually going to put this layer above 
and now everything is metal. So there's some areas where we'd obviously want to uh, paint some wood back in. And I'm just painting black and white on this mask here. And I don't know if that metal is really the best metal. We're going to, let's drag in this steel rust and see how that looks. That looks all right too, but that's also a bit, uh, I'm going to paint in some of these other areas, keep seeing some areas here. Since my uh, ID map didn't quite get a good bake along with everything else. <laughs> but yeah, so there's there's kind of the base of the barrel. Let's see, we're looking at the metals again. Maybe we'll do a metal kind of similar to the ones we used here. So let me do, I believe I have a metal stylized. stylized. Oh, there we go. Let's drag that one back behind here. It's going to be a darker one, but it might look cooler. Huh. Oh, it's already got the mask on it. We're just going to go here, right click, clear mask. And actually just remove mask. There we go. I kind of like that one. That's pretty nice. Um, kind of gives it a different look. It's a little too shiny. So we're gonna go in here and look at that. I'm gonna delete these. Well, let me see. Uh, this one's too shiny. I don't really like that one. We're just gonna use this one and modify it slightly. So we're gonna zoom in a little <clears throat> and then just take kind of a, kind of break down some areas, see what, uh, see what's kind of constructing this, this metal. So we have, that's adding a little bit of that dark layer a dust copy, another dust, kind of that coating overlay, underpaint, clear coat. So this clear coat is actually what's adding this most of the shine. I don't want it to be that much of shine. What if we, so that doesn't change it, but if we click on clear coat, we can actually look at the roughness here. I can make it a little rougher just by sliding this and changing it. And that's already looking better. And then let's close this up and I actually want to change my wood color to kind of match that other color. So if we look through here, here's that grunge pass, which I might actually use that. It does have some nice, some nice stuff it's doing there. Yeah. I like what it's doing with the edges and things. So I'll scroll down and here's our base wood color. So there we go. And we can take that and I want to make it like that deeper brown, maybe a little more saturation. And a lot of this color actually is also coming from this noise color above. And the noise color, I'm actually not sure how that's being generated. Oh, is it right here? Yeah, it's really it's being generated right here. There, that's, that's nice. It looks like a nice barrel. So that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. I had some baking issues and things like that in this, but other than that, everything turned out really nicely. Um, other than like these errors and things and you can look through here and you can kind of it's probably my ambient occlusion layer and things like that it's causing these errors but we can come back and actually um, modify these as we go Whoop, what happened there oh I think I I don't know what I did oh I went through if you hit C you'll cycle through the layers of all the different types, you know, base material, metallic, roughness, normal map, and height, and normal and height. But I, if you hit M, it'll jump you back to the, your base color. Uh, it looks like actually I lost my... Hmm. Well, I think I'm in like some sort of mask view. I'm not really sure. View... No, cycling through. Well, we're both having issues here then. <laughs> I'm not sure what it did. Hmm. That's probably a setting I don't know about. Should be somewhere along here, but I'd hopefully I can find it to show everybody. Let's undo a few things. Oh, 
Maybe it was just a setting I did. Well, it looks like it messed up the colors I had selected, so let's redo those really quick. There. Remember, we have our diffuse color here, and you kind of slide this. Go back to the base. Get the nice dark wood. Maybe just a little more saturation. And if you wanted, you can modify some stuff in here too. Like say, uh, let's let's go through here and find like here's that layer that's adding all that nice edge adjustment. Say you wanted to do a little bit more of that. Let's just duplicate that layer and we'll look, click on the mask, and we can edit this mask a little bit so it doesn't so it uh, maybe doesn't apply as much. And you could also set this to what happens if you, you know, linear dodge, it's going to make it terrible looking, but let's just use that for a second so we can actually adjust this to uh, kind of uh, reduce, I want it to be like a another level of edges or edge. So just kind of pulling it back, kind of tweaking it to where but global balance is giving us a lot of this. I wonder if we can go any lower than that. Let's try 0, 0.5. Uh, we can. Let's go even lower. Let's do 0, 0.25. And now go back to, let's say, a uh, soft light or something or overlay again. So here's it's giving us that second layer of edges basically. I don't want it to be quite that intense, so let's just turn that down a little bit. So now it's almost like a, you can see it's a little bit thinner lines, but it's adding a nice little edge there. And you can go in here, we could tweak it even further. Let's see, oops. Let's hit undo here. Let's try 0, 0.5. Maybe that's global contrast. There we go. See the texture that we can remove a little bit of that. And now I want it to be like this little ring there. So it's almost like two layers of trim edge. But yeah, so that's <clears throat> pretty much done. If we wanted, we could determine a size of like a side of the barrel. Like say we wanted the bottom to be a little darker. Also in the program, if you hold shift and right click, you can kind of slide through the lighting. I could go to then do smart mask, and I'm going to find this one that's called ground dirt. And I'm going to make a fill layer and apply ground dirt mask to that. And see how it looks like it's all like build up on the bottom going up. And we're just going to change this to multiply and make this color a little darker over here on the right side. And also I only want this to affect color, so I'm going to uncheck all these other aspects. And now, there we go, click on and off, we have a nice like kind of dirty layer down at the bottom. And we're going to save that, and that's our barrel for now. Uh, I am going to go and fix up some of the normals and stuff and just tweak that, those things, and, but, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And um, uh, oh, and also at the end, when you're done with when you when you're done with your object, you can export textures. And here you can choose, like, say you wanted to export, you can actually export straight to Sketchfab, uh, or like uh, pretty much anything. We got Dota exports, uh, Unity, Unreal. I'm actually going to export mine straight to Sketchfab, and that is, has a built-in exporter right here. So I can just type this out, and it'll plop it right into my sketchpad files for me and i just had to do a few little tweaks to get it ready to go but uh thanks for watching thanks for stopping by i really appreciate it um i hopefully everyone will join me in 3 december uh, and actually we can jump over to the render view and see what this looks like in a little bit of a location you can hear we could also i'll do a clean color there we go but yeah Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. If you like the videos, uh, leave a comment and 
get a like and subscribe if you really like it. And yeah, I'd like to hear what everyone thought. Uh, take care and have a great day.